there's something satisfying about physical media. The experience of listening is enhanced when you know that the music is right there with you. No one can take it from you, and no paywall can stand in the way. As nice as it would be to have LPs with me everywhere I go, that is sadly unfeasible. The next best thing, then, is locally stored digital music. While I hadn't explicitly come to that conclusion as a 12-year-old, that idea stuck with me and eventually pushed me across the digital music player event horizon. What followed was an adolescence-defining obsession with iPods, all in pursuit of finding the perfect digital music player. After pioneering a few different iPod modifications, and even starting a Bluetooth modification service as an enterprising middle schooler, I began encroaching upon the limits of these devices, which were older than I was. The boundaries defined by device capability and cost were not insurmountable, but rather not worth overcoming from a cost-benefit perspective. Wanting an ideal music player, I decided that the iPod wasn't the right platform, and that's where the JPL.mp3 was born. So today, let's dive into it. Welcome to JP Lab Systems. This is the JPL.mp3, an ESP32-based MP3 player designed with a focus on modularity, expandability, and classical music. And it's all designed in free and open source software. The housing is fully 3D printed with a design language crossed somewhere between an iPod Nano 4th generation and iPod Classic 5th generation. I've implemented a USB-C port here at the bottom for charging but since it's also hooked up to the ESP32's data, uh, USB data lines, I've also got the capability to add firmware features such as a mass storage device class, which would allow me to drag and drop files via USB-C, or perhaps uh, USB firmware upgrades. So I can do that in the future since the hardware is there. The defining feature of this build has to be the click wheel. It's a rotary encoder sourced from Adafruit but it's in the form factor of the original click wheels on first generation iPods. It's super tactile and fun to interact with, but they're super tricky to source because they're not frequently in stock. So it was pretty cool to use it in this project. On this side right here, we've got the micro SD card slot, which is used to hold obviously the micro SD where um, all the devices files and um, the database is stored. And so here we've got our two volume buttons, volume up and volume down respectively. Um, then super nice and tactile. And then finally on the other side here, we have our hold switch, which currently is functioning as a power switch, but you know, due to a GPIO mix up. And then finally up top, we have a headphone jack, which is incredibly revolutionary. The process of building this thing lasted for more than a year before I was ready to call it done. I started by prototyping on a breadboard at the end of my sophomore year. I initially planned for a VS1053 based architecture as I had experience with that silicon from another project, but eventually, after a few months of trial and error, I decided to move forward with audio decoding natively on the ESP32 with this awesome library from Shrave Fowl one sorry for butchering that. That summer, my workflow started with firmware prototyping on a breadboard where I made big picture firmware and hardware decision. Then I designed a rough PCB, which I basically knew wouldn't work. But after the first batch came in, my junior year had started, so the development schedule got a bit delayed. Debugging of the first iteration happened incrementally that fall, and by the new year, I had assembled a partially functional second revision and had a third revision fully designed and on the way. The electronics iteration coincided with rough mechanical work I was doing, and I slowly iterated before zeroing in on this design. By this spring, I had a device. These past few months, I brought the project over the finish line, adding firmware finishing touches while also learning Git. And the project was done right in time for my school's annual maker fair. So what does it take to build it?
mentioned earlier that I implemented a custom database on the jpl.mp3. So let's dive into what exactly that means. Traditional, traditionally, music is organized under the artist album song paradigm. And this is a really robust way to categorize Western popular music. So that includes genres like pop, rock, country, and also some things like jazz, where it's often artists who organize albums, which are collections of individual songs or tracks. And we have paradigms such as ID3, which allow for this metadata to be efficiently encoded within MP3 files. But this system fails for classical music because it doesn't allow for organization by parameters such as composer. Because oftentimes, when listening to classical music, the individual artist or orchestra which performs a piece isn't as important so much as the composer of that piece. But oftentimes, within classical music, the orchestra or soloist which performs a piece is listed as the artist, and the composer data gets completely obliterated. So what did I do to solve that? I implemented this custom classical, data, uh, classical music database, which is organized under the composer piece paradigm, which puts the composer as the principal uh, artist in this paradigm. And then each composer has, pe has pieces. So this cuts the album out of the picture because it's a relatively inefficient way to organize individual pieces of music. But I can still encode recording uh, information such as the soloist or conductor or orchestra within that database because it's flexible and expandable. And it's inspired by products such as Apple Music Classical, which have turned this discontent with the artist album track or song paradigm into this marketable product. Specifically, I've implemented this with a SQLite 3 database executed on the ESP32 within this native library that's super helpful. I'm storing all the relevant metadata, such as the composer and piece, along with the uh, performer, conductor, or soloist within each database entry. And that's allowing me to organize by all relevant metadata. And it's super robust and super optimized for classical music. And it still even offers me the opportunity to expand into traditional popular music as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing, as that would help the channel a lot. If you'd like to take a look at the source code or the source files, check out my GitHub repository, as that has all the requisite source files for this project. There aren't any ready-to-make build files like STLs, and that's because this project is still very much a work in progress. The firmware is super buggy, and the mechanical design isn't perfect. So you'd probably have to modify it a little bit to make something you'd want to use every day. That being said, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.